Showbiz's shiniest castle is disintegrating. TV's brightest, sunniest tower of fabulous fun and frivolity is falling into dark and shadowy ruin. Destined for dereliction, a sudden shambles, surely beyond redemption. Not so long ago, the happiest, snappiest show in town. This morning is now a grim byword for misery and mayhem. The hot seat where Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby ruled the airwaves has become the most toxic place on telly, a chair of despair. Schofield has gone, his once glittering career in tatters, destroyed on the altar of his own epic dishonesty and deceit. To his credit, late in life, the fallen star has confessed to his sins, fallen on his sword and profusely apologised for his egregious pack of lies. He's still pounding away on Instagram, insisting all at this morning is sweetness and light. But who cares what he says? He's a liar. But total, though, disgraced Schofield's mea culpa undoubtedly is, is he really the only one responsible for an escalating crisis that is so disastrous it could bring down all of ITV? The share price is plummeting. Watch this space. But is it really the case that no one at this morning, none of Phil's friends, none of his colleagues, bosses, co-stars, especially Holly, had even a remote clue that he was getting extremely close to a young man, 34 years his junior? Judging by the way they're all lining up to deny any knowledge, you'd think Schofield had gone out of his way to keep his extramarital affair a closely guarded secret. The question is, did he? And if he did, how come investigations were launched into exactly what was going on? And what kind of an investigation gets closed down the moment the suspect denies the central allegation? Not a very rigorous one. Did the bosses actually want to find out the uncomfortable truth? Or were they anxious to swiftly sweep their biggest star's complicated private life under the carpet to preserve the show's family favourite image. What is on trial here is far more than Philip Schofield's ruined reputation, far more than Holly Willoughby's uncertain future and far more than a rancid office atmosphere wrecked by a torrid tissue of lies. What is on trial is the very integrity of the entire television industry. Viewers think of Phil and Holly acting like TV husband and wife, selling us the delusion of their fantastic friendship, laughing, crying, sharing their alleged emotions. And they ask, was it all fake? People feel like they've been defrauded, flogged a fabrication, treated like gullible idiots, easily conned by the cynical performances of hypocrite presenters pretending to be something they are not. Four years ago, locked in a legal battle over her tax, Lorraine Kelly won her case by persuading a judge that when she is hosting her eponymous ITV daytime show, she is in fact nothing more than an actress playing a part. She remains a popular star. But the Schofield psychodrama proves that TV audiences are sick to death of manipulative on-screen fakery and they're not going to put up with this shameless sham a moment longer. If the ITV top brass are busy convincing themselves this is just a storm in a TV cup and that now Schofield has left the building, it'll all be OK, I've got bad news for them. Because they're on trial too. Their whole culture is in the dock. And if they don't put things right and adopt a different, more decent approach to a disillusioned audience all set to abandon the sinking ship, they're not understanding that they have reached their day of reckoning. If they don't dramatically change their ways, it won't just be Philip Schofield whose career crashes and burns. For whom does the bell toll? It tolls for everyone who knows they turned a blind eye. But much more than them, it tolls for ITV. I mean, it's an extraordinary situation, JJ. I mean, I've been covering showbiz for longer than I care to admit, mm. and I've never seen anything like this. It's all got to go completely. There's no way 
I don't believe for a second that Holly Willoughby didn't know about any of the stuff that Phil's been doing. There's no chance. I know what you get up to on a weekend. Do you know what I mean? Of course, if you are that close, you're going to know it. You're going to know it. How do we know these rumours when we don't work at this morning? Listen, listen man, that's exactly what I've been saying. You and I, as showbiz journalists, mm. even non-showbiz journalists, people outside of the industry, they know, knew about what was being talked about at yeah. this morning involving Philip Schofield and this young runner guy. They yeah. knew. Yeah. So how come you knew... I knew, mm -hmm. lots of other journalists knew, but no one at this morning knew. Exactly. No one who worked closely with him yeah. doesn't stack up, does no, it? No, it doesn't. And I think that they will find that those that covered this up and are denying it now that they didn't know, or they turned a blind eye, the lies are going to catch up to them. Because, of, you know, when you tell a lie, it always yeah. ends up coming back to bite you. So I genuinely think that for many people who did cover this up, they're going to probably see the end of their careers for this. Uh, it could even be worse than that. Uh, the way I'm seeing it, JJ, is I think if ITV have uh, got any sense, if they get their wits about them, this morning has to go. Yeah. I can't see that Holly can sit on that sofa a moment longer, the chair of despair, as yeah. I call it, because every time people see Holly, they're going to think, where's Phil? Exactly. She is inexorably linked with that guy yeah. and she is tainted by association. She's over. 100%. The stench of Schofield is lingering around her. And as you're right, whenever I see Holly Willoughby, all I think is... Oh, you're the one who lied for Phil. You're the one who tried to convince us that you knew nothing about it. You are, in my opinion, Holly Willoughby, you are as bad as Philip Schofield then because you have enabled his behaviour. Even if, even if it's all he's done, even if he's, all he's done is be rude to people, Holly still sat there and co-signed his behaviour by not saying to Phil, maybe don't be so rude to the guests mm. next time. Maybe, be, maybe treat the runners better, blah, blah, whatever. She has enabled his behaviour, so she's just as bad, in my opinion. Philip Schofield is in the public eye. He's a respected figure by millions of people who watch him every... Yeah, yeah. Well, not anymore because of his actions. And the, I think he's breached the, the, pub, you know, the public's trust. He watched him every single day. And what makes it worse is... He was on this morning and his whole persona was, I'm Mr. Nice Guy. I'm just a lovely, normal guy. Yeah. If he was working for MTV back in the 90s and he was a bit of a wild guy, you wouldn't bat an eyelid at him dating some young run on the show. But he has painted himself to be holier than now and clearly this man is far from it. Well, I don't think we'll ever see him on television ever again anywhere. Uh, and one thing is for sure, this story is not over. No. no. Uh, so lots more developments to come up. I suspect more heads to roll. Uh, it's a, a fast moving, developing story, uh, which we'll keep abreast of throughout the week. Uh, it's time now uh, for a bad ad. Selective introductions to the beautiful people and their private phone numbers are waiting for you. 24 hours a day. Call 1-900-500-5000 for those private phone numbers. $5 a call, adults only. For selective introductions to the beautiful people and those private phone numbers, call 1-900-500-5000. Do it now. Which, of course, cost you a few dollars, to say the <laughs> least. Uh, the thing that fascinates me about that rather sordid advert <laughs> was that guy in the middle with a huge collar. <laughs> like Dracula or yeah, something. bigger than Harry Hill. That was strange. <laughs> this, this advert is supposed to be for beautiful people, yeah. but they're like this. Yeah. Psychopath. Yeah, watching it. Call me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrifying. Nineties <laughs> hotline for terrifying people. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful here. But oh, terrifying no. people with huge collars. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, let's move on to uh, anti-social media. So take it away. <laughs> Yeah, this is the point in the show where we check my bulging sack of fan mail. I get uh, <laughs> avalanches of it every week. Uh, Anna's got some as well. Uh, if you hang around with me, you get some really bad hate mail. Uh, here's the hate mail to me. Uh, this is all on Twitter. Uh, the BBC should check if Kevin O. <laughs> is a suitable candidate for question time. <laughs> After all, he promotes hate and misinformation. No <laughs> doubt he'll get picked up in his limo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't travel by any other method, obviously. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm up for question time. That would change the tone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, I'm more interested than most of the people who go on that show. That's, that's really over, isn't it? Really? Question time, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Used to be must-see TV. It's now must-miss TV. <laughs> uh, here's the second uh, fan mail letter that I received this week, uh, among many. Um, rock, rock, what right does Kevin O'Sullivan have to slag off the f 
Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> How dare he say it's full of weeds? He's against cult cancel culture, but wants to cancel everything. Yeah, I want to cancel you. <laughs> uh, I did say that the Chelsea Flower Show was full of weeds. Because it is. Why aren't there no flowers at the Chelsea Flower Show? There are there. I thought it meant the people who are attending are weeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, them as well. <laughs> Particularly that King That's guy. Like, He's yes. a real weed. <laughs> He's a real weed. No, no, no. It's because of all rewilding and all that sort yeah. of thing. The whole idea of manicured gardens yeah. has become unfashionable and unmodern. <laughs> yeah. So if you look if you look at the Chelsea flower show now, it looks like a weed patch. <laughs> There's no flowers there. <laughs> so, you know, uh, whoever sent me that tweet. <laughs> right. Here's the third one. Uh, Kevin O'Sullivan's furious face. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, what just happened, Faith? <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin O'Sullivan's furious face makes me think of red jelly. How odd. Uh, every, everyone knows he is a secret communist. You know? <laughs> he is a f numpty. Well, <laughs> I'll accept I'm a f numpty, but uh, I don't think I'm a secret communist, am I, JJ? No, you're definitely, you're definitely <laughs> 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 Have you noticed my uh, extreme left wing tendency? Oh, you know what? I, you know, I have seen that personally. <laughs> up the people, yes. up the workers. Oh, all, yeah. All, all, all that. Thing, Kevin O'Sullivan Kevin Sullivan does not care about the people, let me tell you that. Yeah. Much. He's oh. definitely not a commie. I'm, str <laughs> I'm struggling to care about anything. Let's have some of your oh, hate yes. mail. Yes, uh, I get Anna. hate mail too. Anna is a neo Nazi girl who speaks a lot of. <laughs> she needs to get a. Job. Yeah, facts. Yeah, facts, facts. apparently. No. Well, okay, but have you got anything controversial, though? <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, I think oh, we'll yeah. go to break while we can assimilate that disastrous information. <laughs> we'll be back in a second. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. What can we do to persuade the woke coppers who mismanage Britain's pathetic police forces that we'd like them to arrest Just Stop Oil's eco-nut demonstrators the moment they block the road, the instant they break the law by obstructing the King's Highway? We want them to just stop Just Stop Oil. Not two hours after they caused the chaos by preventing thousands of decent citizens going about their law-abiding business, driving to work, taking the kids to school, getting to hospital appointments and all the other daily tasks that should be our basic legal right. Can someone please tell the massed ranks of the UK's hopeless chief constables that it is our right to live our lives they should be worried about, not the right to protest of white middle class climate obsessives determined to signal their dazzling virtue. Day after dismal day, we see bunches of bearded, bespectacled boars carrying their doomsday death cult banners, shuffling along, holding up the traffic and driving drivers to distraction. And instead of doing what they should be doing, arresting the road blockers and clearing the highway, what do the Rosas do? Basically, soppy officers hold the protesters' hands, allow them to ruin everyone's day and pounce on anyone who tries to stop them. Is it just me or do the police actually love Just Stop Oil but despise members of the public with better things to do than shout, scream and stamp their petulant little feet about the end of the world? Why do the cops only ever seem to get their handcuffs out when someone is trying to stop the marchers? Why don't they arrest the marchers. A few weeks back, all of a sudden, the police were the very soul of vigilance when they jumped on eco-protesters and Republican activists like a ton of bricks the second they got anywhere near the crowds gathering for the king's coronation. At the time, I hoped that this would be a new dawn of no more dire disruption. I hoped that this lightning-fast action was not special treatment for the king. Well, guess what? 
It turned out to be just that. If you don't happen to be the sovereign who rules this land, the fawning police will still stand by and watch eco-warriors from Tunbridge Wells ruin your day. At the snooker, the rugby and even the Chelsea flower show, these self-obsessed orange paint sprayers proceed with impunity. Why are they allowed to stage their demos without interruption? Why do they get to stay there with their placards, T-shirts and self-satisfied smiles. Cart them off and bang them up in the back of a van. Could it be that the coppers like them, that they support their climate change cause and therefore go easy on them? Because after all, they're heroes who are just trying to save the planet, right? Yeah, right. Here's the deal and the grim reality. Police chiefs have the discretion to decide when a demonstration has caused unreasonable disruption. If the Just Stop Oil docks are blocking the traffic, the cops could easily declare unreasonable disruption immediately. But they don't. They leave it for at least two hours. Why? They didn't leave it two hours at the coronation. Why should it be one rule for the king, but a different rule for the rest of us? Home Secretary Suella Bravman should haul in all the woke top cops and tell them that the next time she sees a law-abiding citizen getting arrested for trying to break through the Just Stop Oil lines, they will be fired. Since they clearly don't understand whose rights they should primarily be protecting, perhaps they're more capable of understanding that their highly paid jobs are on the rack. Meanwhile, in England and Wales alone, more than 56,000 muggings went unsolved last year. That's over 80 robberies a day. Car thefts, burglaries are not even investigated and less than one in 100 rape allegations results in a charge, let alone a conviction. Lost in a weird and woeful world of hate crimes and patrolling the tweets, not the streets, the police are getting their priorities seriously wrong. Full-scale structural and cultural reform is required. But where to start? Here's an idea. Start by arresting the damn road blockers and not the poor, innocent people whose days they are willfully ruining. Now, uh, what do you reckon, JJ? Am uh, I right? Completely. Completely I agree. agree with you. Thank 100%. You. I think, uh, to, to use Mike Graham's favourite word, the police are bozos. Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah. And we've seen the public taking just, just this into our own hands lately. We're only going to see more of this happening. If I was the cops, but the cops are now saying they're not going to attend from August. They're not going to attend mental health call-outs. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. So the that. cops should not be going and protecting Just Stop Oil. Stop going and helping them. Yeah. Let the public sort it out themselves yeah. and we will see Just Stop Oil doing less protests. Yeah. And uh, on the coronation, what was it now, three weeks or three or four weeks ago, uh, I remember saying, I mean, suddenly the cops were, you know, Straight lightning in. fast. Yeah. I mean, they, they were in on uh, the Republican demonstrators. Just Stop Oil were in the crowds as well. They yeah. were on them like a yeah. ton of bricks. I mean, literally, within 30 seconds, yeah. piling out of a van, stopping them. And yeah. I said at the time, well, you know, I, I'm a bit worried about the right to protest. People do have the right to protest. So I was slightly uncomfortable about what happened at the coronation. Yeah. But I, I said at the time, I'll accept it as long as you're just as fast to react the next time Just Stop Oil block the roads. Guess what? They're not. It was but special treatment When for I the went king. to Oxford yeah. Circus a couple of weeks ago, they were actually walking down the road. Yeah. The police were walking with Just Stop Oil down the road and holding up all the traffic. And even the public that were walking past them, some of them were just calling them like and everything, like just you know, <laughs> hurling loads of abuse at them. Like not so the right? public are not <laughs> on the side of the Just Stop Oil protesters yeah. uh, because they're just causing mass disruption and they're not actually getting any support for what they're standing for because they're just disrupting yeah. everyone's daily lives. Yeah, I mean, as I say, the, the, the crux of this, JJ, is that the police have got the right to decide when unreasonable disruption has happened. Yeah. So they have a policy now of waiting for like two hours. Now you block a road in central London, you wait for two hours, you yeah. got carnage, yeah. absolute yeah. disaster. Mm. Uh, so I would suggest that the police discretion, they should uh, shorten the time in which they react to about 30 seconds, like at the coronation. 100%, 100%. All I can say to the public is if we keep on fighting back, yeah. then the police are gonna have to eventually 
move just stop oil on. Because at the moment, they're arresting the one or two individuals who are trying to get these idiots out the road. But if more of us start intervening, the police will have to think, actually, maybe it's better we just... For, for your own safety, just stop oil, we're taking you off the road. Or just don't support them and walk around with them yeah. when they do go on protests in the first place. One thing, though, as you alluded to earlier, JJ, we're all laughing about it, but this is going to get out of hand because mm. these people who are angry and they want to get to hospital or get their kids to school or just get to work, yeah. one of them is going to really explode and it's yeah. going to be the police's fault. They've yeah. got to be tougher on all of this. Uh, now, one way to uh, deal with eco-protesters is the way they did it with dancing on... The dancing with the stars. Uh, we're looking, we're watching it now. So, so <laughs> it's like they did their orange paint thing, and you've got the camera operator <laughs> swinging the camera around, <laughs> smashing. Look at that! <laughs> See, that, that's, that's how to deal, deal with, with it. That is fantastic. Maybe if we gave the police some cameras, <laughs> <and> camera booms, <laughs> next time the uh, Just Up Oil mob are on the Westminster Bridge, <laughs> bang them out of the way. That's the way to do it. We should get the Watch Tap and camera crew down there. You, you guys are free, aren't you? weekend no. super we'll get them down yeah exactly <laughs> right uh, also we like to stay political on the show as you know and now it's time for vote for me now whatever you think about donald trump he's a unique campaigner uh, and here he is in action i'm here to challenge you to a match in wrestlemania what that was actually Donald Trump campaigning to become president of the United States. I mean, you, you can't beat the Donald, can you? Uh, but uh, have a look at the second instalment of this uh, bit of campaign. Uh, you can't beat Donald, can you? He's unusual. <laughs> he knows where the cameras are and he knows how to get attention. I mean, in the US, wrestling is huge, especially with a certain demographic of voter, and that's who Donald is trying to speak to all the time, yeah, right? Yeah. Convince the poor people you're one of them, and it worked. Uh, oh, abso yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he's a master of television. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to, how to use television. Yeah. Uh, everywhere he turns up on this big plane, he comes out looking massive, <laughs> walks down the stairs, <laughs> huge crowds. He yeah. knows about television, and that's how you win elections. So yeah. Look out, Joe Biden and uh, Ron DeSantis. You can't even launch your campaign, <laughs> let alone finish it. Uh, <laughs> now, it is time. Uh, once again, for the best of bad TV, we're going to find out about a lovely town in the middle of Britain. Never seen anywhere like it. Central Milton Keynes. Never been anywhere like it. Central Milton Keynes. Come shopping at Central Milton Keynes, where your favourite stores are all under one roof, where the parking's free, and there's the biggest new department store for close on 50 miles. Central Milton Keynes. Junction 14 off the M1. <laughs> off the M1. There's two thoughts about that. I mean, Milton Keynes is 50 miles from anywhere, so yeah. no wonder there's no shops for 50 miles. And the other thing is that seemed to be prejudice against the outskirts of yes. Milton Keynes, yeah. because it was obsessed with central Milton yeah. Keynes. Central. <laughs> if you look at the outskirts, you can just do one. Don't care about you. <laughs> it's a very strange advert. It's like yeah. got an American-sounding oh, uh, yeah. soundtrack with, like, the hillbilly stuff, and then everyone's jumping off the bus what? to go to Milton Keynes Central for shopping. Well, we've had all these, all these operas about, like, the Bull Ring and the Coventry <laughs> yeah. uh, Market. And, and the Newcastle uh, Newcastle Metro. Run yeah. Metro. <laughs> yeah, the Newcastle Metro. With, yeah. the, with the woman who's never been on an escalator <laughs> before. <laughs> this is astonishing. <laughs> it's only an escalator. <laughs> it's no particularly big deal. Uh, well, sadly, that's uh, the end of another fabulous edition. What just happened? Uh, big thank you <laughs> to be serious for Thank you to JJ, my regular guest here. Thanks for coming with me, as always. And a big thank you to Anna McGovern, a social and political commentator. Excellent show. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week for What Just Happened. Shopping as it should be. <laughs>